Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mountain Studio. I'm at Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah. Hope you enjoy the view like I am. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mountain Studio. And in this video, we're going to be looking at adding a floating action button to give users the ability to add data by showing a pop-up. The pop-up will be added in the next video. In this video, we're just going to concentrate on customizing a UI button to look like a floating action button. And you may notice my voice sounds a little bit different. It's because I'm getting over a cold. Okay, now let's take a look at our approved mock-up. The way we'll be opening up the pop-up is through the use of a button at the bottom of the screen. This design is borrowed from Android's UI design convention called Material Design. This button is called a floating action button because it floats on top of the UI. Okay, let's head into our app and begin by creating a floating action button that will be opening the pop-up. And before we do that, let's just go to our board here and see where we are on our project. We created a theme class, so I'm going to drag this to the done. Now, I was originally going to create this button in this feature right here, Add Trips. I was going to create the floating action button, and I was going to create a pop-up. But as I started to plan it all out, I realized that this is going to be a longer video, so I'm breaking it up. And the floating action button is going to be its own task. There we go. And that's what we're going to be working on this week. And just to give you a little bit more information, Material Design does have its own website with specifications. And I just want you to notice this right here, the size of the button is normally 56 by 56. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a 56 by 56 round button with a drop shadow. Okay, so we're in our storyboard. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a UI button. And you notice if I try to drag the button in here, it's going to try to add it to the table view. So if I drop it in, you'll notice right here, it adds it inside the table view. And that's, that's not what we want. So let's delete that. So a good way to do this is just to drag the button into the document outline instead. I'll drag it here. And well, we can't see the button because it's behind the table view, but I'll just push the table view up and it puts the button on top. Okay, now we want this button down in the corner, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drag it down here. But here's the trick, if I let go of it, it's going to go right back into that table view. So what I'm going to do is hold down the command button, and this will allow me to drag it around without it uh, going into the table view. So I'll just stick it right down there in the corner. There's not going to be any text, of course. Now, you notice that floating action button has a plus in it, right? So I have a image that I'm going to use for that plus. So let's go to our assets. And what I'll do is just grab that button. It should be on my desktop. Yeah, it's right here. It's a PDF, so it allows for easy resizing. And we don't need individual scales because it's a PDF. So I'll just say single scale, and it makes it a universal image. And you can see here, it's just a, just a plus. Okay, so we go back to our storyboard. Button's still selected. Let's choose our image, floating action button. There we go. And that image itself is actually, even though the plus is small, the image is 56 by 56. So if we look at the button now, you can see right here, the width and height is 56 by 56. And what we'll do too is, we'll just set these auto resizing constraints here, and it'll keep it down in the corner, no matter how you rotate it or which device you're using. I do want to reposition it a little bit. So I'm gonna hold down Command again and just get it right there in the corner where you see those margins appear and we'll leave it right there. Okay, now I'm going to need an outlet for this button so I can stylize it. So let's create some room here and we'll open up the assistant editor. And as we see here, the wrong one is open. So let's go to automatic. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to right click and drag into my view controller and let's what do we want to call this here? We'll just call it an add button. It's pretty clear. Now let's stylize this button. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to stylize it right here in the view controller until we get it so it looks the way we want it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the background color. Our background color is going to be our tint color. 
There we go. And we want to give it a corner radius so it's round. And we do that on the layer property. Now for the corner radius, if you make it exactly half of the width or the height, because it's square in this case, it'll make the button exactly round. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the, the height of the button and divide it by two. And to access the height, there's no height property on the button itself. So what we need to look at is the frame and then look at its height divided by two. All right, now at this point, let's just run the application and see what it looks like. Okay, it looks pretty good. It looks like it's missing something though, and that is the drop shadow. So let's add a drop shadow. Now, in order to work with a drop shadow, you have to go through the layer property again. And, you know, you might ask yourself at this point, well, what's a layer and why can't I just access these properties right on the, the button itself? All controls on the UI have layers in them. And think of it like in Photoshop or another drawing program. Usually when you draw something, you can do your work on a layer and then add another layer and do some more work and add another layer and do some more work. And then when you produce that image, you can like compress all the layers together and it produces an image. So you can kind of think of a control like that. A control has many layers and they stack on top of each other. What we're accessing is the, the main layer that goes with the UI view. But you can add multiple layers to a UI view or to a control. You know, this is actually a UI button, but it inherits from a UI view. So some of these operations that we do on a control itself, we have to do on its layer and not on the UI view or the UI button itself. So let's continue with setting up our drop shadow. There's a few properties that we have to adjust to make it show up. And again, it's on the layer. And all layers have a shadow, it's just not visible because the opacity is set to zero by default. So all we have to do is make it not zero and it'll start to show up. And in this case, I'm just going to make it 25% opaque or 0 0.25. So that'll get the shadow to show up. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's not bad. But what we want is we want that drop shadow to be further down. Because if we look at the material design specification, you see the drop shadow is underneath the button. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand this drop shadow a little bit and we're going to move it downwards. And to make the drop shadow bigger, what we want to do is adjust the shadow radius. And we'll make that five. Now we want to adjust the position of the shadow and that is controlled through a property called shadow offset. It's pretty convenient. When you type in shadow, these are all the shadow properties. We're not going to bother with the color because black is okay. By adjusting the opacity down to 25%, it gives it more of a gray color. And what do we want? We want the offset, right? Now the offset, this is, this is kind of funny because the offset is actually what's called a CG size class. It's a core graphic size, which basically just has a height and a width. So think about it like this. If the height and width are zero, it just puts the shadow right in the center. And if you give the width a negative number, it moves it to the left. And if you give the width a positive number, it moves it to the right. And same with height. If you give the height a negative number, it moves it up. And if you give the height a positive number, it moves it down. So what we want to do is we want to create a CG size. And we'll just stick with easy numbers, stick with integers here. So with the width, we don't need it to move left or right, so I'm going to keep that as zero. And for the height, I want it to move down, so I'm going to give that a positive number, like 10. Okay, let's test that and see how that looks. All right, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Notice the shadow radius made it kind of expand out a little bit more, and the shadow offset moved the shadow down. Okay, this is perfect. Now, we could leave this the way it is right now, and we'll be fine. But if we want to reuse it, then we have to copy this code and we have to change it for each button. So in a previous video, I talked about extensions. And if you want to watch that video, it might be good to refresh your knowledge on extensions. So what we'll do is we'll just create a function on the UI button that allows it to be called and styles itself. Now here's a folder I created earlier to hold my extensions. 
And I created one for UI view. And all I did is just added this function here. So we're going to do something like this for a UI button. Is add a function which will, well, pretty much like this, we'll like add a shadow and, and make the corners rounded. But we'll give it a different name. We'll say create floating action button. So I'll start by creating a new file. And I'll say Coco Touch. It'll be for UI button. All right, there we go. And it's not going to be a class. It's going to be an extension. So I don't even know why I gave it a name. <laughs> Probably just for the file name here. But I'm going to replace this with extension because it's going to apply to all UI buttons in this project. Okay, and let's go back and we'll grab our code. And we'll just stick it in here. And this isn't going to work because it's looking for an instance called add button. It's looking for a variable called add button, which we don't have. So we can just get rid of this. Okay, that should do it. Now let's go back into our view controller and we'll call that function off of our button. Create floating action button. Where is it? You know what? Sometimes it doesn't show up until I build the project, so let me do that. I'm just going to comment that out for now. Hit Command B to build. Okay, let's see if it shows up now. There it is. So, just to let you know, if you hit Control Space, it'll bring up the autocomplete. And then I'm just going to hit enter to complete it there. All right, now let's see if that works. All right, still looks good. Now this way, whenever I create buttons in the other screens, I could just call create floating action button. So that's how you can customize something using an extension. I'm going to show you one more way that you can do it. And that is basically by creating a custom class. And I'm just giving you options here. You know, how you want to use this information is, is up to you. Extensions are good because you can you can drag and drop this file into another project and it'll work just the same. Custom classes are just as good. You know, it has the same amount of flexibility where you could just drag and drop into different projects and reuse it. So it's up to you. Now what I'll do is I'll just create a class in the extensions folder. I'm not going to keep it. I just want to create it to show you how you might do this. And I'll just call it floating action button. Okay, so we're actually going to use this function. So I'm going to comment this out. There we go. And the first thing I'm going to do is add the rounded corners. And let's go back into our extension and copy this code. Okay, we'll put it in here. And I think it has everything it needs. Oh, you know, this is uh, another thing right here. So if, when we set the background, we're using our theme class. Now, of course, if you dragged these files into another project, it's going to look for this theme class. So that's just one thing to note. If you want to, you could set the background color outside of the class, and it, which will give it more reusability. But in this case, I don't really care. <laughs> so, if that's, I'm, so I'm just explaining to you how you might do it differently. In your project, for a greater reusability, you might not even set the background color. Okay, now to test this, what we're going to do is we'll go back into our view controller. We'll comment this out for now. And for our add button, you see here it's a UI button. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. If you are creating your UI in code, then you can just change it here and call this floating action button. Yeah, there it is. If you're using storyboards, you can come into your storyboard, click on the button like it, it's clicked on right now, go into properties, and go into your identity inspector, and you can set it right here, floating action button. So just some options there for you. Now that should be all I need to do. I don't have to call a function or anything because the floating action button, when it calls its draw function, it'll call this code, and it should set it up so it looks correct. 
Okay, something looks wrong here, huh? Where is our background color? Where's our tint color? There's a problem. There's something you have to do just a little bit different if you're going to use this method. And I found the way to fix this is you can't reference the background color to make this work. You have to reference the layer's background color. So if we just change this to layer.backgroundcolor and then set the color through our tint, we'll have to change something else too. Wait for it to air. Yeah, there we go. So the layer's background color in this case isn't a UI color, which is what tint is here. This is actually a CG color. It's basically a different way of expressing the same color. So what we have to do, instead of using a UI color, we have to say it's a CG color. And that'll convert it and make it work. So again, if I click on this and you come over here, you look at it and you'll notice it's a CG color. That basically stands for Core Graphics. And the way they reference colors is a little bit different than the UI kit colors. So all this does is just converts it in a way that this background color can understand. So let's run it again, see how it looks. Okay, there we go, it looks good again. Now, I need to give you some warnings because it's easy, it's so easy to mess this up. Now, one of the things you may have noticed here is I'm not using clips to bounds, I'm not using mask to bounds. So anything that, that will cut the image or you know create the, the mask or the bounds, clipping of the bounds, you don't wanna do that. Do it exactly the way I have here and it should be fine, you know, as you saw in the UI. So that is, that is an easy, easy mistake. And it took me a long time to figure this out, how to have rounded corners and a drop shadow. Because as soon as you clip it, or as soon as you apply a mask to it, it's going to get rid of the drop shadow. For example, one of the things that you might do is you come here and you say, oh, I'm going to need the clips to bounds set. And what that does is it clips off anything outside the bounds of the UI view or the button in this case including the shadow so if we run it again and take a look at it let's see what happens shadow is gone no more shadow so that's one of the things that you don't want to do so let's uncheck the clip to bounds and there's another property that you might accidentally set that's on the layer which is kinda of like the same thing it's called mask to masks to bounds and basically what that does, you know, you can see it in the description down below, it clips anything outside the layer's bounds. So it's kind of like the boundary. And our boundary is going to be a round circle, right? Because we're setting the corner radius. So anything outside of that corner radius will get cut off, including the shadow. So you don't want to set this property. Just leave it the way it is and use this code right here, these five properties to get your rounded corners and your drop shadow. Okay, in this video you learned what a floating action button is and how to create them. I showed you a few different ways to style them. You can just do it right in your view controller, you can create an extension off the UI button, or you can create a custom UI button class and have the draw function style it for you. Just remember that floating action buttons should represent the primary action on your screen. So on our screen, the primary action will be to create a new trip. So it makes it obvious to the user what to tap. They're gonna look at our screen, they're gonna say, oh, there's only one thing I can do. I'm gonna hit the floating action button and then we'll allow them to add a new trip. All right, thanks guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it on social media like Twitter or Facebook with your other developer friends. And if you'd like to help out my channel or help out this video, you can supply a translation for the title and the description in your native language. And that helps people in your country or people that speak your language find this video. All right, thanks for watching and consider hitting that alert bell down below and that will notify you when the next video comes out. Thanks guys.